we have Mary Powell and Brian Murphy. Um, Mary has been an ecosystem and compliance consultant along the front range since, can I say the, the, the year 1993? <laughs> now she's the uh, environmental manager at Mile High Flood District. Um, Brian Murphy has been working in water resource for 20 years, we'll say, with Friendly. And he just started his own company called Riverworks, uh, solving, as he calls them, wicked problems, which we have plenty of uh, in these urban watersheds. And, um, oh, sorry, I should be calling you Dr. Murphy. Brian just got his uh, PhD from CSU in June. So congratulations, Brian. <laughs> and if that's not enough, he just started uh, working with the River Network as a Healthy Rivers Program Manager, so you're busy. So um, I know my five-year-old daughter was really excited about this talk. Um, <laughs> let's find those unicorns. I think this is on. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for attending. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Mary in a second. I just wanted to, as a kind of starting point, say that uh, some of you may have been in, I don't know if it was, it was this exact room, but I think three years ago, three or four years ago, Mary or um, Laura Krager and I gave a presentation, I think similar title, um, v around a very loose concept about the high functioning, low maintenance stream framework. That's what we were calling it at the time. Um, and, and so we're happy to be back. Laura is now the executive director of the Mile High Flood District and has many other important duties. So Mary and I have... This is important too. This is important, yes. But um, so we're going to give uh, an update on where we're at with all the kind of the evolution of that original presentation that we gave three years ago. And um, the one thing I will say for a little bit of fun, there are many unicorns in this presentation, and uh, I might buy you a beer if you can get the correct number at the end. So, just a little teaser. All right, thank you. Um, and actually, to go back to Brian's point about Laura's involvement, um, the district, frankly, recognized how important it was um, it, to hit some of these topics we're going to discuss about the higher functioning lower maintenance stream systems and um, coming up with more, uh, more resilient solutions to our uh, stormwater management systems. And they created the position that I'm in now. So I'm the first environmental manager that the district has had. Um, again, in recognition of the importance of the vegetation and just general ecological functioning. Um, just getting some new thinking in-house to help us better implement some of the things that Dave spoke about earlier, um, and just improving our overall results and products. So, um, so yeah, just want to make that point. Um, yeah, so the urban stream framework, I, that was a great intro, Brian, that this has been in the works for years. So it's continually being refined. And um, I'll say that if we come back in a couple years, we'll probably have you know additional, it's a living thing. Um, Laura has called it trying to build the plane while we're flying it. So we, um, we do take some dips and spins and things every now and then, but uh, we continue to, to refine it. And it, it's helpful to have feedback from groups like this and get some response to it. So, so far, I think we're, we're doing pretty well on it. Uh, so learning objectives. That sounds so like, um, sorry. I academic. Academic, yes. Well. Guess a PhD person put this together for the most part. So, but anyway, this is what we hope you might come out from today is um, why the district decided that we needed a, a new framework. And sorry, I know framework is overworked these days, but bear with us because it, 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 the word, the phrase does describe what we're talking about. But um, why we needed a new approach. And the district really has taken a new approach over the last several years, and it's pretty exciting. But um, just recognizing that we needed to change our thinking and how we did it. Hopefully that'll get you thinking. Um, we're going to go through some of the framework steps, just how we're trying to incorporate this new thinking, the urban stream system thinking, um, into our whole project life cycle, planning, design, et cetera. And then um, Brian will take over on highlighting the different tools that the district is developing to help us um, implement things. Uh, again, through the entire life cycle, implementation, monitoring, and adaptive management on some of the things we're, we're implementing. There is no quiz at the end, by the way. Other than the number of unicorns. 
Right, yeah, but that's more like a you know, prize or something. Um, so the, the, this conference, I think one of the, the tagline is, um, you know, generally speaking, what did we do in the past and what are we going to do in the future? And in the past, the district, were, we were very focused and kept our heads down. We were very focused on flood control and reducing flood risk. That's our mandate. It's, it's in our legislation, our um, establishing legislation, so that's what we did. And we kind of, you know, like I said, kept our head down. Most people didn't have a clue who we were. Um, and I was happy to see, I don't know if you remember, Dave Jula's public survey thing that showed how important climate change was and development, et cetera. There was a little teeny tiny sliver that said flood. And it was, and I was like, well, that's, we must be doing our job because people aren't concerned about it. So, all right, that's great. Um, but we started as our, uh, we've been around for 50 years. And as our older projects have started to come to the end of their life cycle, we've recognized that we need a change because those old projects are very, very expensive to replace. And they may not be providing the highest function that they possibly could for that stream system. And we'll show you an example in a, in a moment. Um, so we wanted to figure out a way, how do we know that we're doing the right projects? Rather than just being kind of sole focused on uh, the, the stream stabilization or flood control, what are some other things that we can do, be doing with our money to maximize the benefit to our community? So we've really become a lot more outward focused and a lot more community focused. Um, and there's some tools that Brian will describe on ways to figure out whether we're doing it right. Uh, with this new framework. Um, the first, also part of that is not just project identification and prioritization, but really basing those choices on understanding our system better. Again, in the past, we were flood focused, so we, had, we knew a lot about hydrology and hydraulics, all about that, right? Um, it was very engineering, hard engineering focused. And so our understanding of the system at the time was understanding the stormwater conveyance system, the flood mitigation risk reduction system of our waterways. Um, I'm still focused, I'm still trying to um, fight against this, but um, just yesterday we were talking about terms and conditions and sometimes the district still talks about the streams and whatnot as um, stormwater systems. Okay, maybe we could not just call it stormwater system, right? It, it's like Dave was saying, wastewater, everything's waste. So for the district, it's all stormwater, or uh, uh, yeah, stormwater system. So we want to better understand the, the holistic system. That's the natural streams, the even the, truly though the stormwater um, infrastructure system. How does it all play together, and how does it work in a particular watershed, in particular contexts? We really want to understand the context of the systems in our district boundaries. And oh, by the way, I, I'm assuming most people are familiar with the Mile High Flood District. We're, well, yeah, that's good enough. So anyway, once we understand the system and we can identify the projects and implement them, then what can we do in the long term to manage those in a more sustainable way and a smarter, um, uh, better stewardship of our systems and our public um, uh, interest in using taxpayer money appropriately and smartly. So. I've already touched on this, but this is the head down hydrology hydraulic solution to flood mitigation and stormwater management that the district implemented for many, many years. Um, and it, you know, this thing does its job. It contains the hundred year flood. It gets the storm, you know, the storm water because that's all it was counting on. It gets the storm water from point A to B. Great. And you know what? This thing is really pretty um, risk. Uh, this thing is pretty fail safe, right? Because it can, it's so narrow, it can contains the flood, it has to work, right? If this thing fails, it's kind of a big deal because suddenly you might have um, flooding outside of it. Um, it's a big problem, right? So it did its job. It stands there for 50 or 75 years. Um, and that, that was kind of all we were thinking about at the time. Um, so again, we're trying to move away from this to um, get to the point of where we can have multiple 
benefits to the community from our stormwater management solutions, from our overall stream management in general. And we want to be better about being proactive, trying to preserve floodplain. We have a new floodplain preservation fund that helps us buy floodplains so we don't have to implement um, solutions like this. Um, and we're doing that through new studies, different types of watershed planning that we have going on. And uh, the DCM is design, construction, and maintenance. Previously focused on the hydrology and hydraulics. Now we're really adding more things that we'll get into in a few minutes here. So the solution on the right-hand side is kind of an example of where we've headed. Are you from Boulder? <laughs> Whoa, yeah, which one? <laughs> the one back there? Yeah, I'm your local volunteer. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Well, did we do okay? I think so. I love watching it grow. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is in Wonderland Creek in Boulder, and um, it was highly, it, it was really adversely affected by floods in the past. Um, and this project took a lot of structures out of the floodplain. Now, we could have done the same solution as we would had done before. A nice, hard... It's never going to, you know, it's going to do its job. Um, but we impl implemented some of these newer approaches to come up with a softer solution that's frankly easier to maintain over time. You need to do it frequently, but the total cost over the life cycle is much cheaper than going in and replacing these enormous concrete structures. The problem is getting people to fund that stuff up front, right? It's easier to say, well, you know, pff, we don't need to maintain it too much with concrete. Um, so it's hard to get people to recognize the benefit in the long term on these things, but anyway. Um, but one thing we've tried to do here, again, the main focus of our, of our approach is being sensitive to the context in which our projects are located. Sometimes we need to have fail-safe projects. The risk is just too great to, to not have it work. Some of these systems, like some of these structures here, it's, those are safe fail structures. If those deform a little bit, a lot of that's ungrouted boulders there. Um, if that deforms, it's okay. It can still probably function pretty well. We might have to go in and replace those boulders, resettle them after a large flood event. But if those fail, it's okay. It's in a safe fail situation or context. So that's what we're trying to do more of understanding our systems is understanding the context, the sensitivity to flood risk, etc and how we can put in the right type of solution that recognizes that context. This doesn't work everywhere. Uh, it's just, that's a fact. Um, and so again, this is an example of what we would call the higher functioning, lower maintenance stream solution. Um, yeah, it has obviously higher ecological function than um, our previous solutions. It is lower maintenance over the time. Um, Again, though, you have to kind of convince people that's, that's true. So, and finally, the, and we'll, Brian's going to go into this a little bit more, I think, and I'll touch on it, but these higher functioning, lower maintenance solutions, we're really considering those through the lens of what we consider the five elements of stream function. And I think, is there a slide? Yeah, not, yet. not yet, okay. Am I blabbing? Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll just flip through this pretty fast. Why are we doing it? Because we want to balance our service to our community. There's so many things we can do with our money that, are, that have, you know, what is it, the, mul the multiple bottom line. We want to serve our community in ways that make a lot of sense, but still accomplish our mission and um, what we're supposed to do with flood mitigation. Again, it's all context-based. That's so important. It's not just hydrology and hydraulics, and we're doing it through these five elements. Um, this is a, a probably pretty standard cross-section you've seen, just how we modify our stream systems to accommodate urbanization. No surprise here, we straighten it out, we, we put it into our transportation, we kind of put the streams uh, accommodating our transportation and our different infrastructure. So, not a good thing. Well, you all have already blabbed about that. So here's the official, um, well no, this isn't the, the the five elements yet. But one, again, what I've been trying to talk about a little bit is the community values piece, the context that we're in. We're trying to recognize, we're finally realizing there's people around these projects and, you know, wh what's best for them? What do they, what do they need? What do they need from a, uh, economics, 
um, planning, what are the other plans going around in the, in the context, health, safety, well-being, equity. We're trying to work on those underserved populations as well, uh, the way that uh, Dave discussed earlier. And so we're looking at things through these lenses. We've got vegetation, community values, hydrology, hydraulics. We can't get rid of hydrology and hydraulics. Um, that's the basement. Uh, and ge geomorphology. So we're recognizing that our projects, we have to take into account the context in, through the lenses of these five, what we call stream function uh, elements. It's a little different than the typical stream assessment. And that's a tool that we're, Brian's gonna talk about is our urban stream assessment protocol. We had to come up with something new because of this urbanized nature that we're in. The, the traditional assessment methods just weren't working for us. And they didn't oftentimes include the community values quite as much as we would like. And so I'm, how, did I, I sped it up, huh? All right. I'm gonna pass it. I'm gonna pass it off to Brian here who's gonna talk about ways that we're developing to help us implement all this. And I'm gonna zip, because I only have 10 minutes. Uh, so the toolbox, this is kind of the new, new information. A lot of what Mary just talked about is setting the stage for this Urban Stream toolbox, and, and literally this was sketched on a, almost a napkin about a month ago of how the five different pieces or tools uh, fit together. And so I'm gonna talk through that a little bit. Some of you, or many of you, you know, have heard about the Urban Stream Assessment Procedure. I'm gonna show a few things there, but hit on this framework that's really, uh, I think, setting the stage for, for the district to be successful in implementing both planning and design projects moving forward. It's adding structure um, and some consistency for district consultants, for district managers, for local governments to really to understand um, a lot of what Mary just talked about, kind of the concept, but how do we get a bit more granular on that? So, if I can go, there we go. So just real quick overview, and these slides will be available because I am gonna move pretty quickly, but we talked about the five elements. The Urban Stream Framework is the overall life cycle of the district's activities. It gets into some adaptive management, but it's really set up around the five elements. The stream assessment procedure is the identifying the needs and the monitoring. And then this idea of the urban stream implementation strategy, we're really trying to use urban as much as we possibly can in the, the toolbox, but uh, this is something that Laura actually came up with is kind of navigating the complexity of managing these urban systems and gets to how, once we have identified our needs, how do we go through the process that is uh, more inclusive and in, in really looking at also the context and having those conversations. So, and then the watershed story, some of you may have heard of that as well is, and these are my words, uh, but it's kind of a data warehouse and visualization tool for stream conditions. And that's still really early in the process of being developed. Jeff Sickles, if he's in the audience, is kind of leading that effort, but it's something that all of this information would be housed on the district's website um, through their Confluence platform, if, if you've heard that term. 